Hello students, welcome to EPG Part Sala. I am Anup Kumar Kapoor from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today we are going to talk on module comparison between human and non-human skeletal remains from the paper Forensic Anthropology. Learning objectives are first to able to define Forensic Anthropology and Osteology and then explain the differences. Second, to determine the identity of the diseased. Third, to be able to define and distinguish between the human and non-human bone, in able to define the process of examining the size, shape and the structure of a bone. To able to describe the microscopic structure and diagnosis of bone between humans and animals. Humans are unique among primates in that they alone practice obligatory bipedalism and their skeleton shows distinctive adaptation for the form of locomotion. Humans ability to regulate their body heat over long periods of heavy activity is also unique as are their large brains that are highly developed organs that allow for technology and diversity of culture and language. These qualities enable humans to travel over water, in the air and into space. Humans live permanently in almost all terrestrial parts of the planet and occupy inhospitable environments. Distinguishing between human and non-human bone is a task that should only be undertaken by a forensic anthropologist or individuals experienced in osteology. These include determining whether the suspected is actually born and if it is born, is it human or non-human. Numerous non-osseous materials such as wood, pottery, plastics or even stones can sometimes be mistaken for fragmented human bone. Before discussing whether or not a bone is human, indeed at the start of any investigation involving suspected skeletal remains, the first thing the examining anthropologist must determine is whether or not the material is bone. Once the anthropologist is sure that the material is bone, they must determine whether it came from a human or a non-human animal. An experienced forensic anthropologist will have no problem distinguishing non-osseous material from bone. Thus, basic knowledge of the human skeleton and non-human skeleton can help to save time when determining the forensic significance of whole or fragmentary skeletal remains. By examining the size, shape and structure of a bone, an anthropologist can determine if it is a human. In determining whether or not bone is human, it is important to distinguish between an area of the bone-to-bone -bone articulation, an area of muscle attachment that is the origin or insertion, and area of relatively smooth bone that is neither an area of articulation nor an area of muscle attachment. Distinguishing humans from other mammals. From an anatomical perspective, humans and non-human mammals can be very similar in their skeleton components and because humans are mammals, they possess many of the same skeleton characteristics. Upon gross examination, there are two main characteristics of bones that can help make the distinction between human and non-human bone easy and expeditious. Now first is the maturity. Maturity aids in differentiating small non-human animals that even after reaching adulthood have bones that are similar in size when compared with jawline humans. The most common human bones to be mistaken for animal bones are the bones of infants. 
they are sufficiently different from adults and even older children bones that they considerable confusion many animals have adapted to living environments that are very different to the environments that we live in therefore they often possesses distinct skeletal elements that humans do not have the bones of birds are well suited to flying because they are very light additionally birds have unique bones that are not found in the human skeleton including the fulcrum that is the wishbone and the synclavicular and extended sacrum the presence of these bone in a skeleton assemblage is a tip of that the bones are not human some bony elements though distinctive can be confused with human bones when fragmented pieces of sun bleached turtle shell can mimic bits of human skull the key to distinguishing turtle shell from human remains is to examine the cross section of the pieces human skull bones have an interior composed of spongy looking calcareous bone but turtle shells do not then second comes morphology the second characteristic of bone that aids in the distinction between human and non human mammalian bone is morphology or the shape of the bone because humans are bipedal they have distinct morphological features related to walking upright which distinguish them from other quadrupeds that are adapted for four leg locomotion humans on the other hand as bipeds have a singular central vertical axis of orientation that distributes all of the individual's weight through a series of bony mechanism designed to soften the impact of bipedal locomotion as a result human crania are centrally placed on the vertical axis the spinal column has four slight opposing curves the pelvis is broad and short the femora are angled the tibia have thicker proximal surfaces for greater weight bearing the feet have dual arch structures and the upper limbs have less pronounced musculature and a greater range of motion there are generally three levels of identification that can be utilized to distinguish between human and animal bones the first one is gross skeleton anatomy the second bone macrostructure and thirdly bone macrostructure that is the histology now we take first one that is gross skeletal anatomy first under this it comes cranium cranium morphology differs dramatically between humans and animals due to the uniquely large brains that humans have compared to body mass it is quite distinct because have large rounded brain case and flat or orthognathic face in profile since mammals even large ones have smaller brains their canal bones are generally more curved and usually smaller then animal mandibles are often v shaped in superior or inferior view and separate at the midline as opposed to u shaped singular construction of the human mandible third is human crania are oriented on a vertical axis and the orbits are located in the front and above the nasal aperture animal crania are oriented on a horizontal axis and the orbits are located behind the lateral to the nasal aperture these orientations also cause the position of the foramen magnum to be located inferiorly in humans and posterior in animals differential skeleton anatomy of humans and animals cranium humans and animals now we can see from this table there are few characteristics by which we can differentiate between human and the animal the first one is large bulbous wild small face in the case of animal it is small wild large face 
in the case of human walk relatively smooth in the case of animals it is pronounced muscular markings sagittal crest inferior in the case of human inferior foramen magnum in the case of animal it is posterior foramen magnum then chin is present in the human and the chin is absent in the animal then in the case of human orbits at front above nasal aperture whereas in animal orbits at sides posterior to nasal aperture in the case of human it is u shaped mandible that is no midline separation whereas in animals it is v shaped mandible separates at midline second is dentition dentition varies greatly between humans and the animals and even between different species of animals human teeth reflect a generalized design including a mix of slicing that is incisors puncturing that is canines grinding that is molars teeth they are normally more rounded than animal teeth second most animal teeth reflect specialized dietary adaptations grazing animals have more grinding teeth with the specialized ridges and carnivores have more shearing teeth with sharp ridges in addition many animals have different dental formulas compared to humans third adult humans generally have a complement of 32 teeth eight in each quadrant this includes two incisors one canine two premolars and three molars the dental formula is can be set 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 many placental mammals exhibit a generalized dental formula that includes three incisors one canine four premolars and three molars that is 3 1 4 difference in skeletal anatomy of humans and animals with reference to dentition in the case of human it is omnivorous whereas in the case of animals they are carnivorous herbivorous and omnivorous then dental formula is 2 1 2 3 in the case of humans in the case of animal the basic dental formula is 3 1 4 3 then incisors that is maxillary are larger than other mammals whereas in the animals horse maxillary incisors are larger than the human incisors canines are small in the case of humans whereas in the case of animals carnivores have large conical canines herbivores have small or missing canines in the case of humans premolars and molars have low rounded cups divided by distinct groups whereas in the animals carnivores have sharp pointed cheek teeth herbivores have broad flat cheek teeth with parallel furrows and ridges now this is the third vertebral column and thorax that is a chest area human and non human have about the same number of vertebrae even in giraffes have only seven cervical or neck vertebrae but the shape of the vertebral column and of the digital vertebral body is different first the vertebral column in a typical quadruped has single gradual curve from the neck to the pelvic girdle while the human has an s shaped column this difference in vertebral column shape is reflected in the morphology of the vertebrae as well second the quadruped typically has a longer more cylindrical vertebral body than does the human and the vertebral bodies are more similar in length from the neck region to the pelvis third the thorax that is the chest cavity including ribs is deep and narrow in quadrupeds and shallow and broad in humans which brings the center of gravity of humans closer to the vertebral column lastly ribs tater in quadrupeds are more curved in humans then comes clavicle the clavicle maintains distance between the sternum and the scapula and provides support for the shoulder girdle in humans whereas in some other mammals in which the four limbs are used for manipulation through it is vegetarian or absent in many mammals and is therefore of limited use in species identification 
Next comes scapula. When comparing human and other mammals, the dissimilarity in the shape of scapula can be very distinct and can quickly lead to a positive identification of human and non-human remains. The scapula is elongated in most non-human mammals with the glenoid fossa, that is the point of articulation with the humerus at the end of the long axis. In humor, the scapula is more triangular in shape with the glenoid fossa along with the most lateral surface. Then comes radius and ulna. Some larger mammal species have curved and fused radius and ulna. Recognition of these two bones immediately excludes humans as both the radius and ulna have stayed diaphysis and remain unfused throughout the life. Next comes femur or the long bone. Much of the difference in long bone anatomy between animals and humans is the result of pattern of locomotion. Depending on the level of development, jawline human long bones may have unfused separate epiphysis. Conversely, those of the small adult non-human animal will display fused epiphysis. As a result, Non-human bones can be easily differentiated from jawline humans by examining the level of bone maturity. Pelvis, if a small pelvis is fused into one unit, it will be a non-human pelvis because a human jawline pelvis of a comparable size is still in multiple pieces and the two adult pelvic bones of the humans do not fuse to at all unless there is a pathological conditions. Tibia and uh, fibula, if in number of small animals including mammals, the fibula is reduced in size and is fused to the shaft of the tibia. In humans, the fibula dogs are not normally fused to the tibia unless there is a pathology such as ossification of ligaments that they are served to keep both bones articulated together. In addition, other morphological indicators that can be useful when differentiating small animals from human jawline long bones may include non-human skeleton features such as the fusion of fibula and this and the curvature of the long bone shaft that is called diaphysis, the long bone shaft of small mammals may be noticeably curved where it is stayed in healthy javelines. Now we take foot. Mammals belong to the order Artiodactyles, that is hooved and mammals that have an even number of toes on each foot, two or four, can easily distinguish from humans by the presence of metapodials. In these animals, for example, deer, sheep and goat, the third and the fourth metacarpals and metatarsals are fused together into one structure early in development and the generic name for both is metapodials. Differential skeleton anatomy of humans and animals postcranium. In the case of human, upper limb less robust. In the case of animal, robust upper limbs. In the case of human, radius and ulna are separate bones. In the case of animals, radius and ulna often fused. In the case of human, large, flat and broad vertebral bodies which spot spinous process. In the case of animal, it is small vertebral bodies with convex or concave surfaces and long spinous process. In the case of human, sacrum with five fused vertebrae, short and broad. In the case of animal, sacrum with three or four fused vertebrae, long and narrow. In the case of human, pelvis is broad and short, bowl shaped, whereas in the animal, pelvis is long and narrow, blade shaped. In the case of human, femur is longest bone in the body, linea spera is singular feature. In the case of animal, femur is similar length to other limb bones, linea spera, double or palato. Then in the case of human, separate tibia and fibula. In the case of animal, tibia and fibula are often fused. In the case of human, lastly, 
foot is long and narrow, weight borne on heel and toes, whereas the animal foot is broad, weight borne mainly on toes. Second comes bone macrostructure. Animal bones have a greater density related to size, less porous and thicker in cross section than the bones of humans. In humans, humeral and femoral cortical thickness is about one-fourth of the total diameter compared to half of the total diameter in animal proximal limb bones. Some basic differences in animal and human bones macrostructures are now here in this table, differential bone macrostructure of humans and animals. In the case of human, it is more porous cortical bone, where in the case of animal, it is less porous cortical bone. In the case of human, one-fourth thickness of the diameter of long bone. In the case of animal, half thickness of the diameter of the long bone. Now, when we see at uh, these two diagrams where it shows the relative thickness of animal and human diffusal cortical bone, the dark circle is of animal and the other, it is very same, it is a human bone, means how they are different from one another, that picture is very clear. The third is bone microstructure, that is the histology. In fact, if just a small bone fragment is recovered without any morphological indicators, the only way to identify whether it is human or non-human would be through histological, that is microscopic examination or DNA analysis. In addition to the general gross morphology, that is the shape of the skeleton element, the external and the internal structure of the bone are vital to diagnosing the bone and the species. While the color of the bone is not as important as other consideration when diagnosing species, it is important in determining topophonic influences. Topophony is defined as anything that happens to a body after death. This includes the decomposition environment and patterns that is climate, water and insects, for example, and even the temperature of the laboratory in which remains are stored. The postmortem after that history of the remains is something one of the most important clue in solving a forensic case and should never be dismissed when collecting evidence, that is including remains. The macroscopic structure of cortical bone is often diagnostic between humans and animals, although not practical in field setting. Osteons in human cortical bone are scattered and evenly spaced, whereas in many animals, osteons tend to align in rows, that is called osteons bending, or form rectangulite structure, that is plexiform bone. Comparison of structure and morphological skeleton differences between human and non-human animals. Now, in this table, we see the first is human and the mammals. Then we study the relative weight. In the case of human, it is heavy. In the case of mammal, it is also heavy. Transparency is the same. Bone surface morphology is the same. Cortical bone is thick and thick humans and mammals, right? And in epiphysis, they are all same. In birds, we have light. Then we can see fish, amphibians, and reptiles. That's how these reptiles, amphibians, fish, and birds, and mammals, and animals, how they are different, we can see from the table. There are several ways. Forensic anthropologists can tell the difference between animal and human bones. Firstly, experts have a good look at them and compare them to the knowledge of human or animal bone shape, that is morphology. Here they are looking for the right lumps and bumps on the bone in the right places and the general proportion of the bone. Big animals such as cow, sheep and horse have much thicker than humans. If tape them, they sound much more ceramic than human bone. Expert can also look at sliver of bone under the microscope. Big animal bone is built differently in the body so as to different structure. Animals like sheep, cows, 
donkeys, giraffe, etc., have to get up as soon as they are born to avoid predators. This means their bone has to be laid down very fast and has to be very tough. Under the microscope, it has a sort of brick-like structure where the cells are laid, overlapping on top of each other like bricks and a brick wall. This makes it very strong. Human bone, other hand, has longer to form and build strength as when we are babies do not have to walk immediately. Humans' bone cells are laid down more slowly around the blood vessels and have a sort of concentric ring look to them like the rings in a tree trunk. Comparison of structure and morphological skeleton differences between human and non-human animals. Now in this table we see the first is human and the mammals. Then we study the relative weight. In the case of human, it is heavy. In the case of mammal, it is also heavy. Transparency is the same. Bone surface morphology is the same. Cortical bone is thick and thick, humans and mammals, right? And in epiphysis, they are all same. In birds, we have light. Then we can see fish, amphibians, and reptiles. That say how these reptiles, amphibians, fish, and birds, and mammals and animals, how they are different. We can see from the table. There are several ways. Forensic anthropologists can tell the difference between animal and human bones. Firstly, experts have a good look at them and compare them to the knowledge of human or animal bone shape, that is morphology. Here they are looking for the right lumps and bumps on the bone in the right places and the general proportion of the bone. Big animals such as cow, sheep and horse have much thicker than humans. If tape them, they sound much more ceramic than human bone. Expert can also look at sliver of bone under the microscope. Big animal bone is built differently in the body so as to different structure. Animals like sheep, cows, donkeys, giraffe, etc. have to get up as soon as they are born to avoid predators. This means their bone has to be laid down very fast and has to be very tough. Under the microscope, it has a sort of brick-like structure where the cells are laid overlapping on top of each other like bricks and a brick wall. This makes it very strong. Human bone, other hand, has longer to form and build strength as when we are babies, do not have to walk immediately. Human bone cells are laid down more slowly around the blood vessels and have a sort of concentric ring look to them like the rings in a tree trunk. Let us summarize this module. Humans and animals have anatomical differences in skeleton composition which distinguish bones throughout all parts of their bodies. Human and animal bones are distinguished by gross skeleton anatomy, bone microstructure and more bone macrostructure. Some human and animal bones are quite similar making it difficult to identify isolated and fragmentary bones in the lab and the field. Cranial morphology, for instance, differs between humans and animals because of large brain size that humans have compared to their bodies. Humans generally have smaller faces compared to their cranial walls. The opposite is true for most animals with the exception of some primates. Human crania are also oriented on a vertical axis. The layout is horizontal for most animals. Humans and animals also have different teeth layouts and mouth structure. This difference called dentition accounts for differences in human and animal dental formulas and teeth size and shape. For example, humans have small canine teeth and low molars, while animals have small or non-existent canine teeth. 
these teeth are sharp and jagged in carnivorous and rounded or flat in herbivorous. Postcranial human bones of the upper limbs are less robust than those of the animals. Humans have separate radial and ulnar bones while those who these two bones are fused in most animals. All mammals share a generalized skeleton template meaning they all have the same bones in roughly the same locations, a skull, spine which ends in a tail, ribs which sports the internal organs and four sets of limb bones. If an investigator understands and uses the basic principles, it will not be necessary to memorize the form of each bone of each species. Thank you.